Welcome back to another Seattle House Mafia industry interview. In our first official episode of season two, we sit down with Alfonso Tan. Alfonso's humility and positivity shine through as he shares his story and how his unique life circumstances led him to dance music, first as a fan, then as a sought after DJ producer. Make sure you hang till the end where Alfonso shares his thoughts on how to progress as an individual artist while still supporting other artists and the dance music community as a whole. To keep up on all things Seattle House Mafia, be sure to like and subscribe. For now, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. All right, welcome back to the first episode of season two of Seattle House Mafia Industry Interviews. I am Phil, your host, and we're here once again in the Seattle House Mafia HQ. Um, I personally couldn't think of a better way to kick off 2024 with, with someone who's been consistently making waves in the Seattle dance music community. Um, our our guest today, he's a resident of the Cuff Complex, was a part of the Lost Crew before they retired. He has releases on Late Night Munchies, Uniting Souls Music, Build It Records, and Cartel Collective. In the last year, he's played sets in Antwerp, San Francisco, Chicago, LA, San Diego, Vancouver, and of course, all over Seattle. I want to welcome Alfonso Tan to the studio. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Of course. This is uh, quite an honor. Yeah, man. It's great so, to see you. Yeah. Well, see you too. Well, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about it off camera a little bit, but we hadn't actually really met until you came by um, You came by our little monthly that we do here in West yeah. Seattle. So yeah, yeah. Was, it was cool to see you. And I was like, wow, I actually really click with that dude. So yeah, that was really awesome. Yeah. I was I, Like I said, we started following each other on Instagram. Yep. And then I think I started catching the interviews. I saw friends were getting interviewed. And like, I just really enjoyed the, uh, the mix and the, just like the whole thing was really cool. Yeah. So um, and yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, and I don't know. The the thing is, I've seen, seen your name all over the place with different crews and different events. And to me, that always that always smacks of somebody who knows how to kind of traverse the landscape in a very, like, healthy way, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, totally. not all clicked up necessarily and and not probably, right. probably avoiding drama. John Lee was another one that I talked to who's very good about that. Just, you know, and I just think some people are better at that than other people. And, you know, so congrats to, that's what well, it seems you. like to me at least yeah I, I guess i mean our, there's a lot of good people on our scene yeah. so you know finding those people we get along with is it's not it hasn't been like too hard i guess you'd say like they're just people that you vibe with that are around for sure you know touching different parts of of the music scene here for so. sure yeah and yeah. you've played with a lot of folks that have come through here actually yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure and i will say this the other the other thing that that really hit it home for me was um <clears throat> So my wife, I don't want to call her a normie, but she's kind of a normie. Like she doesn't come, she doesn't come from this world. She, she flits into it when I drag her out. And, uh -huh. and uh, she said to me on um, Saturday night when you were, you played the Todd Terry show. And then the, the beautiful thing about seeing you and your crew was you guys were all just like dancing and smiling and sweating and like having a great time after your set. Right. That's yeah. not how it always goes for DJs, I think. And my wife turned to me and she goes, your, your friend your friend Alfonso's got really good energy. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he does, right? So that's that to me tells me, again, like there's some like passion around the music and the scene and it's real, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, well, I'm glad she said that. I'm very yeah. flattered by that for sure. And um, fortunately, like I've got like a good friend group and we all just enjoy that type of stuff in general, you know? And like after me, uh, Trantron played, um, I was great. Same with yep. Avignon right before me. Yep. Um, and then Farrakh Don and Todd Terry, I'm huge fans of. Yep. So we're like a bunch of my homies. So it was like, you know, easy to stay. And also in general, like something you're saying is like, I just, I'm very rarely the type of person to show up at a gig and leave right after. Um, it's, I, I don't know. I, I want to call people that do that disrespectful to <laughs> the event they're playing, but like, I just kind of like to be there and hang out and have fun with it. So. Well, I think yeah. there's, I think there's a, probably just an innate passion that and i think most people that dj and that are involved in the music business are they're they're passionate to a certain point but like the people that actually kick it afterwards mm -hmm. after the job's done they're they're you know sort of next level i think passionate about the scene and about what's going on and supportive as well the community right. which is, i think is yeah. really important yeah so it was cool to see and it was noticed by my normie wife which <laughs> 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 it's pretty funny um 
I guess that that kind of leads me into what I typically like to do is <clears throat> just learn a little bit about the journey and the story sure. and, yeah. and and so you know I, I'm assuming you're a music lover and I oh, yeah. I want to know where that came from and and how that all started. Sure. Yeah. So um, I mean I've always been really into just music in general. It's always struck me as something really powerful. Um, and grew up listening to like a mix of hip hop, R and B. Um, dance music. Uh, just did an interview for CA nine point five and was talking about how. Oh, did you? Yeah, nice. and it's it's like we're lucky to have something like that in Seattle because a lot of cities just didn't have dedicated dance music stations. So, yeah. listen to like a bunch of trance and just stuff they would play back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then went through like a phase of like um like indie dance and like even like the like Justice and like Ed Banger stuff like that. Yep. Um, and then. Kind of made my way back into house. I would say, like in my late twenties, um, was uh, it's kind of it's tied to like my life story. So a, a bunch of my straight friends. So I'm I'm a gay man. It came out in late twenties, um, and a lot of those people were like getting families and moving to the suburbs and not really going out anymore. Um, so I was kind of making a new friend group, and um, still want to go out a whole lot, enjoy nightlife, right. and. A lot of the music at a lot of like the gay establishments back then weren't wasn't great. Um, but then I went to creme work one night and Riz Rollins was playing. Oh yeah. And uh, Riz is someone that just I've always known that name for a long time. Like yep. listen, listen to them on expansions. And um, he played uh, "You Don't Know Me" by Armin Van Helden. It's a classic. And like it just kind of like it's a song I remember from being younger, and like it just kind of like pulled me back in. And I'm like, I need more of this type of music. So that kind of just sucked me into like listening to a lot of house again and just enjoying just like the 4-4 dance music style. Um, and then I'd say like around 2018, um, you know, kind of like made my way on the scene, was really familiar with like now like the fun things to do in Seattle's dance scene. Um, and in my head, I wanted to kind of like just think about like making a mix for myself and like stringing music together at home. like. I want to make some music or I want to make a mix <laughs> of just all the music I like. So that's kind of how I started with like the actual act of DJing. So like um, 2018, you hadn't actually technically DJed before that. No, wow. no. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So the digital era, but, um, yeah. So, um, at the, uh, one of my buddies, Kevin Cower, it's a big person in night, Seattle nightlife, queer nightlife here. Um, he offered to give me like my first like crash course DJ lesson. So very cool. Went to his place. Um, he spent like an hour with me, just like explaining how CDJs work, a little bit about phrasing, and then he's like, "All right, have fun. I'm gonna go play video games." <laughs> so <laughs> you know, it's kind of in there messing with his 900. Yeah. Um, and then after that, like I was just like, "Okay, I had enough of this. I think I just need to go and like push buttons for a little bit on my own." Yeah. So found a cheap Serato controller on Craigslist. Um. And then just was at home practicing with that a lot. It sounded like shit for a yeah. while. Yeah. Um, and then made a mix. First mix and I shared it just on social media with a bunch of friends and it got well received. So I kind of started doing this thing called the Rookie Mix where I was like holding myself to like a monthly mix I'd release and share with people. And then that turned into... Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm skipping a part. So... Um, there was a day, um, out on Madison beach, some friends were hanging out and, um, this is the first time I played out in public for anyone. So okay. I just had like my old MacBook laptop and, uh, this used controller and a Bluetooth speaker. And I'm like, I'm going to see it's just like, I want to like, if I'm going to play in front of people and, um, see what it feels like. Yeah. Just, I was like, yeah, Let's see what this is like. So I think I had like done a, like a mix or two at that point. Um, and just, uh, brought my stuff out and. Uh, played for a little bit, played until like the computer overheated because it was like spring time or something like that. <laughs> but I had just like the most amazing time. Like it was like I had a blast. Like everyone's having a good time. We're all just like having the fun. They're like I'm like sharing music with them. They're having fun. Like we're all. It's just a, it was a great vibe. Like yeah. I really enjoyed the feeling coming from that. So um, things just kind of start, started to build from that. Um, Let's see what happened after that. Played a house party, and then I decided that I wanted to start trying to play in venues, um, but realized I'm like I don't have any clout, right? Like I'm not gonna just like walk up to someone, right, and be like, hey, can I can I play here? Or, you know, I was starting to make friends in the scene, but I still just felt like that wasn't 
like I didn't have enough like of a weight to throw around her ass for stuff like that. So um, I ended up throwing a party at the underground for just friends of mine. And like I'm like, okay, well maybe I can just round up enough people to to break even on this thing and, and what DJ year was in front this? of people. This was just that was the end of 2018. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah, wow. yeah. So um, was talking to uh, Mark from the underground. And uh, he just got me set up, and <laughs> so I threw in, I threw an event. Learned also a lot about like throwing events and stuff yeah. like that. The whole that whole side of things, promoting um, that leads into like a little side thing that I was doing for a while. But that's how that kind of started, and um, uh, that gave me like a platform to give other people opportunities, and it also helped me kind of like become more of a like. A person in the community right which led to more more gigs with other crews and stuff like that so yeah well and i feel like and by all means correct me if i'm wrong because i feel like you're straddling a few different communities honestly and i know they right. converge yeah. in certain places uh -huh. but but i mean you're you're doing gigs with the queer scene but then yeah. you're also doing gigs with like I don't know what we call the house scene or just right. the, like you know kind of that monkey loft crew and again i, I know there's yeah. some convergence but how how did you manage that and traversing those two different worlds or are they that different it's well i mean they're not entirely different like there's a there is a lot of overlap yeah. um with just people that attend the events right and also fortunately seattle is like a very welcoming city like flammable is a very poor accepting event um yeah. you know and uh so my straight friends have played you know some of the gay events and stuff like that because they just they just have like a a force in the city so there's there's a lot of like solid overlap with that, I think. And I okay. think also just like showing up and being a face in both spaces is really important for that. Yeah. So um, just like supporting and, and showing interest in being involved in the different things is like how that, I guess that's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you I know? know, you know, I was telling you off camera about my, my gay neighbors that, that, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. took me to pride in San right. Francisco in 2000, but you know, they were doing like white parties and circuit parties. Right. And, yeah. And I have no experience with those. So you, were you also getting into that, tapping into that world as well? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's, so it's, it's kind of funny, like that whole thing you mentioned about, like I played Antwerp, San Francisco, Chicago, right. right. A lot of that stuff is like, fortunately, like there is this lane of like, like gay parties. Right. And, um, I've been fortunate enough to like, like, gain enough notoriety in that scene i mean they look where people want to bring me to fucking, these parties are they yeah. off the hook or what because they look pretty crazy yeah <laughs> some of them get pretty pretty wild and they're pretty big yeah um, played a couple big ones this year so that was cool oh very yeah cool. okay so um yeah just fortunate that that has like been a, like a massive opportunity to yeah. to share my sound with people in different areas and stuff like that so That's so cool yeah yeah yeah, and then you have also obviously you know I've seen you on bills for Monkey Loft. You, right, you yeah. played flammable, right? I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That That's was right. a lot of fun. That was when it was at Cherry. Yep. So. Yep. Um. Yeah, it's love flammable. <laughs> it's hard so. not to love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And then with so th this all sort of kicked off 2018, and you picked up speed pretty quickly. It sounds like, which is great to hear. Right. Um, and then. The, so these gigs like the San Francisco, the LA, the Antwerp, those were those were more on the 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 gay side of yeah. things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oftentimes when I'm traveling somewhere, it is for for a gay party or something like that. Got so, it. Yeah. Do you have a um, preference which which parties you play? I like um I like all of them because they offer different opportunities for stuff. Like I played um this one in Las Vegas recently, um, Hustle Ball, and it's like. The promoter really wanted to play like me to play like a lot of like dark techno. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Or the one in Antwerp was like a three AM set for like another like really kind of like dark like king slash fetish event, and like th it, it was like the vibe was that. Um, and then, but then there's you know like playing flammable. It's like play play traditional deep house for sure. Um, you know, or like uh, with like the Lost Crew that I used to play with. Like it's. You, you kind of play to like the hour you're at, but it's like really like groovy house music. Yep. Yeah. So it's just like, I like the opportunity to do different things. Um, and I feel like just having <laughs> these opportunities lets, lets me like just explore different sides of myself yeah. and share my style for like what they're going for. 
well, that and makes it's, sense. Yeah, and it's super cool not to necessarily. I think I think sometimes people feel pigeonholed a little right. bit in, in yeah. the genre, or even very specific. I only get booked to play melodic, minimal, whatever. Yeah, and yeah, you're not really stuck there. Yeah, fortunately, like um, I get opportunities where I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say, like, it's kind of funny. So I'm a resident at the Cuff, and it is like. Um, you know, it's a gay crowd. Right. Um, a lot of gay men go and like, um, it's not always like club heads, right? It's just people that want to go out and dance. Right. Um, so it is like, I, I, I try sprinkling a lot more like, like knowing things or things are recognizable. Um, so some like pop bootlegs are pretty fun to play. Right. Stuff you really like, I would, I feel like you couldn't get away with at like, right. you know, for like a, another gig somewhere, like not like I wouldn't play like the Todd Terry remix of um, Demi Lovato's uh, right. Cool for the Summer at Diffusion, gotcha. right? But it goes off at, <laughs> at Cuff, so <laughs> yeah. But the response is like the same, right? That's the beauty yeah. of it. Like you're still getting that energy and you're getting that vibe back because they know the song or they're singing along or they're right. feeling it or whatever. Yeah, and it's, I mean, and it, goes, it boils down to it not being about you, right? Yep. You're serving your crowd, so yeah. Yeah, that's why. So how long have you been resident at the Cuff? So that one was interesting. Um, I uh, I think 2020, I uh, I got an offer to play like a pride party there. Um, and then the pandemic happened. So uh, <laughs> I kind of just like <laughs> threw a wrench at everything. I shake my head because yeah. everybody's got a pandemic <laughs> debacle story. Yeah. A, a lot, like some people come out of it really strong and other people yeah. just had a really tough time. It was one of those things where like, so I've got as far as like exchanging contact info with the owner. Yeah. Um, and then just survived the pandemic, kind of survived. But um, uh, I think around April or May of 2021, it felt like we were coming back out, right? So... And I'm really like really nervous about trying to approach people, but I just shot him an email. I mean, hey, as long, it looks like it looks like we're opening again soon. Yeah, if there are opportunities. I'd like to talk about them with you. And then he got back to me and he's like, "Well, let's talk about like a summer residency or something like that." You know, so um, I think their first official day or weekend open was like the first weekend in July. And um, previously, they played like a lot of like what like, call like circuit music. It's like yep. big room. Um, and it just wasn't really something that like, it's not something that I enjoy particularly. Um, and I came back and I was like their summer resident playing house music and, um, it just, the club just really went off. Oh, okay. Um, so they were, they were, into yeah, it. they didn't so know it, they were going to be into it, but they were into yeah, it. Yeah. And it, it led into, let's just make you a resident for, you know, until today. <laughs> and so, so for, yeah. for, for dummies like me and maybe other people, when when somebody puts you in sort of this resident position, does that mean you're guaranteed, you know, once a month? Are you weekly? How does that look? So it, it kind of depends on what is happening with the crew and how they, they run things. So with the cuff, it's um, once or twice a month. Okay. Um, and it's kind of flexible with like, there's two other residents. So we just like try to fit our schedules together. Right. Because you have gigs um, other, other places right. too. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's how it worked with them. And then with the lost crew, um, Sean Majors and Gene Lee were kind of the the heads of it, and they would sprinkle myself, Griffin Girl, Wesley Holmes, and them, themselves, and Eric Allen yep. just throughout the year. So we would like some of, like a couple of residents would play each party, and then they'd bring in guests from the city. Got so, it. So yeah, it. yeah. Okay, that that's yeah. helpful. Yeah, it's just. I had, you know, back in the old days, you know, I, I don't, I guess I'd call them residencies where they were weeklies, where I was just sort of playing for the venue, mm -hmm. a lot of open format yeah. stuff. But it, I always wondered with those crews, like how that works when they, when they bring you in and become, right. and become a resident. Yeah. yeah, I think everyone treats it differently. Yeah, um, it just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's nice to have have that. Like, there's like, yeah. it's like, okay, well, like <laughs> this is like a somewhat regular time to be playing. So. Well, and it, and it sounds like. The cuff, for instance, they're flexible enough to say, "Well, if you got a gig at the Monkey Loft, or if you're out of town right. for something else, yeah, you guys can work with each other, yeah, and yeah. make sure that the music's covered. It's going to be a badass yeah. night, regardless of who's going to be there, whether it's Alfonso or somebody else." Right? right. Yeah, it's not like you have to play the first Saturday of every right. month, and or, don't yeah. you dare take another gig. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I've heard of that happening too, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll happen too. Don't um, don't you go to another venue when you're, you know, right? That's, that's weird. yeah. Yeah. Not them. I uh, cool. <laughs> there's a That's New Year's really Eve cool. where I did 
both crews in one night. So oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And I just, I don't know, I don't know if you, how much you want to talk about this, but I literally, there was like news this weekend for, from the last oh, yeah. weekend. Yeah, yeah, uh, Stuff that happened at the Cuff, and was it at the Pony too? Or um, at a, the Eagle in the Cuff. At the Eagle, that's yeah. right. Yeah, it was crazy. So, um, and like, I, I hope I don't like misspeak about the laws around this, but basically um, there's like this old law, and I think it was, put into place for like worker safety at strip clubs. So like you can't have nudity and alcohol in the same space. Right. Um, and I know, know for a long time, like the, the LCB liquor cannabis board, they would be on gay clubs for men in like shirt, you know, shirts off or yeah. jock straps. Um, and over the weekend, um, it, it was more like a, a raid with this like LCB and jet involved. Um, they came into the cuff on Friday with like 10 people, um, like uniformed and, up in the whole, thing. yeah, that's from what I understand. And you know, like the, the cuff has not had like a, a violence or like right. liquor violation, but from what I understand the, the GM there was told like, Oh, your bartender's areola is showing or something like that. And it's like, you know what, <laughs> what? So it's just, it's kind of ridiculous because it's like, this is safe space. Like no one's hurting anyone. Like this is also kind of like how we express ourselves. And that's that scene, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, and then from what I understand, they went to the Eagle on Saturday night and they were, you know, like shining flashlights and actually took photos of people. And like, this is like, you know, not everyone is like fully out or they have like, this is their safe space. And it's sure. very, very threatening to be doing that. So you actually make it a was, really good point. I didn't think about that. Like there, there could be a lot of people that are there that aren't fully out and their families right. don't necessarily know. Yeah. It's their like their pressure release or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Oh, that sucks. So, and it's, I mean, this isn't the first time it happened. Um, just, they tend to give these places a hard time and like, they'll say it's not targeted, but I mean, the, the numbers show that it is. Um, so just the last two days, there's been like a huge uproar from like, not just like the queer community, but also just allies as well. And yeah, um, you know, a lot of people speaking up about it. There were some meetings that happened yesterday and today. Um, today was like one for public comment. So Kevin Cower, Joey Burgess, owner Cuff, um, some of the people that are like business owners and just people yep. in our scene were able to provide comment and Hopefully, like a point was landed and like some action will be taken. And is it the who who's behind the that action? Is it the city? Like, is it our city council or is it like who who's sort of saying go go fuck with these guys? So this is like where um, I think it's a mix of of people and like this is where I do need to do more homework. But okay. the liquor canvas board is part of it. Okay, they enforce it, and then um, there's I think there's like a team of um, of like authorities that are like. Uh, SPD, um, the fire department, and they they do kind of like a a team up like violation check or something like that. So, um, and you can imagine what it's like when like like that type of like group walks into an establishment. Dude, peak just, time, yeah. It just yeah. it just seems to me like there's so right. many other problems in the city, you know. Yeah. Then oh to yeah, put energy, resource, <clears throat> money into right. Like you said, nonviolent a nonviolent scenario where people are just right. blowing off steam, having a good time, and yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's just really archaic and like like ill enforced, and it's it's it was a point of frustration. So, but what was cool is like, um, just a lot of people from the community were just like showing up in numbers. Like it's it was a virtual meeting, but like six hundred people were, are, are like logged in. I think that's another thing. It's like if if no one if like there was like you know, 10 people that showed up, I think the point would be harder to land that this is right. a problem. But right. um, fortunately, like the community is able to rally and show that like we are tired of this. So, yeah. Well, well and that, that's what I'd ask you. And, you know, you may not have an answer now, but but please, if you can follow up with me. But if there's yeah. guys like me who are not so connected in that scene, uh -huh. right? But like, obviously, I'm an ally and obviously I care about the music yeah, scene and totally. just Seattle arts in general. Like, how, right. how would somebody like me sort of support you know this bullshit not happening anymore because that's what it seems like i think me. that like just um things like things like showing up on the call um okay. being like a number there like you, even yesterday you weren't able to talk but yeah logging in and showing that like we're here and we're listening yeah um is a good you know it's a good action to take and also just if there's any initiatives that support you know their their support 
um, like the queer community voting in that direction, voting for the right people that that support that. So cool. Um, yeah, those are those are the ways to do it. Probably. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. It just it's it's yeah. It just seems like a little bit ridiculous. It's yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the whole thing. Like, yeah. So. Whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's. I guess that could lead into um, just some other, you know, thoughts around in general, like in the scene today and let's let's start with seattle but i know yeah. you played out of state are there things just in general and and we're talking i guess about multiple scenes for you but right. are there things that you would change you know as as we look at it today sort of at a macro level i would say um just trying to get more diversity on lineups okay really just like um the more people of color more women more people from the queer community um just making them the more actively like diverse and yeah. you know you just after a while it gets kind of like stale if you're seeing the same like you know and it's just white male but like um you know if it's a middle age cis white male, yeah i got you there's there's <laughs> just a lot more um art to be shared when you bring in these right. other communities yeah. for sure yeah yeah um and we can build together and i think that like there is, we do have to be conscious about doing these things. Yeah. Um, we can't just say we're going to do them. And, you know, I, I think, it, and also like the thing is it doesn't necessarily come natural to people. Um, you have to be kind of just intentional and sometimes like say something stupid, but learn from it. Right. <laughs> so, right. You know, it's funny. I've heard very similar feedback before kind of from other, other folks that I've talked to. So it, uh, it's obviously a theme that runs I mean, through. I'm like, and to be like honest, like it's a big problem in the gay scene actually too. Like they're, yeah, right. yeah I mean there, I can name like, like the, the DJs that are DJing at my level in that scene, I can probably name like less than five. Wow. But like mainstream, if you look at like Asians, Asian DJs, um, sorry, <laughs> DJs in the gay scene that are Asian, right? And like, yeah, but in like the bigger spectrum of things, I feel like they're even like they're they're doing a better job in some ways. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not it doesn't you know there it's it's just all over basically yeah. is what I'm trying to say with that. Yeah, but is that is that a is it just an awareness issue? Is it a, a promoter issue? Is it a venue issue? Is it like a little bit of a bunch of things? I think it's a. I think it's. I think it's a mix of stuff. Yeah. It's like you know, there's awareness and then promoters, and I think there's also like a little bit of fear about numbers getting hurt or something like that. Yeah. Um. So there's there's a lot of things that come in, and they just, um, it's like there's not one thing that can be blamed. I feel like there's a lot of factors, but those are certainly some of them. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Any on a, on a <laughs> on a lighter note, um, I just got into some heavy stuff, but that's good. I, oh yeah. This yeah, is, this is like, no 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 man. This is I yeah. asked you because it, this stuff concerns me. Like I I was born and raised in Seattle, right? Uh -huh. And I think you you must you're local too, right? Yeah, yeah yeah from Everett. So and so this place matters, and it matters to me when when I see shifts in the wrong direction. Right. And that, yeah. That shit and it's me off. and right now let's see we kind of have to be hyper aware about that stuff happening. Yeah. Like not to get into politics, but yeah. You know, things are, if people feel empowered to, to shut other groups down, yep. you know, this, <laughs> it's it important. tends to happen more. So, yeah. yeah. Well, so you've, you've played, I think you've played some pretty, some pretty wild gigs is my guess. I mean, is there any, any like super funny, uh, interesting, embarrassing, awkward gig story that you, that you have that like comes <laughs> to mind where you're just like, oh my God, I don't even want to talk about well, it. Well, it's okay. So it's now it's funny. But um, <laughs> Those are the best ones. yeah, so uh, um, I would say like when I um, when I kind of started, like my eyes were getting open to like Seattle's music scene, right? Um, very quickly, Griffin Girl and Sean Majors became favorite DJs, okay, of mine. Yeah. Um, so They're both like, wicked DJs yeah, though, and like right? myself they, and my homies, like they actually were all good friends too. Yeah. They know them. Um, like we were just kind of like if they're on the lineup, we were like going to go to their show, For sure. right? So that's how we um, like we started going to Lost a lot. Yep. Um, we made friends with Emily, and um, actually, okay, there's actually there's two stories about this. Perfect. So <laughs> the first the first part is like so now like we're we're buds with Emily, summertime 2018, and I think she's like, "Oh, come kick it with the booth with me or in the booth with me," and I'm like, "Yeah, okay." So I'm back there, like kind of dancing around. Sure. And at the time, I didn't know who Gene was, 
And um, Gene plays with like a tractor controller and a laptop. So yep. he's getting ready to to like mix out it or mix out of Emily. And um, yeah, I, I like I I think I was just like taking up too much space or something like that. And he was just <laughs> like, he's like, hey, could you like give me some room here? And I'm just like, oh shit, who's <laughs> this guy? <laughs> and like I was just like, sorry, man. Like I you know, and I, I was I I wasn't a DJ at the time, so I was sure. like, okay, what's <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I think the next lost, uh, Gene walks up and he's like, Hey, I'm, uh, I, I didn't mean to be like a, an asshole to you. Like, I just wanted to, like, I just felt like you were giving me like not a lot of space to do my thing there. Right. And he, he just wanted to make sure like I wasn't, um, shied away or yeah. like, so I was just kind of, I, I appreciate his apology. Right. But I felt stupid for doing it. Totally. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> You know, it was nice. He apologized. Yeah, actually. yeah. Some <laughs> very aware of him too. Yeah, to for sure. And he's he is a very aware guy. Totally. So it's like yeah. And then some time passes, and I think it's like uh, January, February, twenty nineteen. And Gene messages me, messages me, and he's like, "Do you want to play Lost?" And I'm just like, "Yeah." <laughs> so uh, um it was pretty tight because i'm like okay i got my first lost gig it's huge yeah. like i love that crew For i sure. love them love the night and then i think it was march in 2019 um we get to that night and i just assumed i was gonna open because you know you're you're a new dj right it's just yeah. you're warming it up right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but um sean majors wanted to open so i was like cool i get to play like 11 to midnight instead wow. so um he gets done with his set he unplugs and he's just like, give me a hug. He's like, have all the fun, man. This is going to be really cool. I'm like, I go in the mix in from him and like, just like go to like, you know, hit the cue on my track and I hit the cue on the wrong CJ and stop the music. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> and like, <laughs> this is the biggest gig I've had at this point. And right. I'm just like, oh my God. So <laughs> I think what I did is like, I just looked at the mixer and threw the volume back up on the track that um he had mixed out of so there was music back in the room right and then i tried to do my thing on the on the stop cj right so like recovered as fast as i could right but then i was thinking about that for like three <laughs> weeks i was oh, like yeah damn that that's when that you, you, you yeah you wake up yeah mornings was... after just <laughs> right so yeah. you know and then be became a resident so that's yeah. why i like telling that story because yeah. Like you can make mistakes and For it's sure. not like <laughs> you can't like, it's not like they're irrecoverable. So I mean, we're all judging you when you do make <laughs> those mistakes, right? Like the guys have been DJing. There right. Like, and you're just like, oh, I heard that shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that is cool though. It's, it's cool yeah. that you can, you can look back on it now because that uh, we've all done it. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, it still happens every now and then and you just kind of, kind of laugh at it. <laughs> so ba I mean, back in the turntable days, you just never knew what you were walking into with the turntable and the pitch and the, I, one of my first gigs, a uh, big gig at Medusa the, oh, the yeah. I, I put my own needles on, but they were lighter than the house needles, but the house needles were jacked up. Right. Uh huh. So I, I didn't realize that auxiliary weight was on the back of the and it was just mm -hmm. super light. And I'm like, well, I can mix in. It seems like it's tracking okay, but the yeah. it, there was just no like, th there was no weight on the on the needle. And so okay. I put it on, mixing in the song. It hits like just the tiniest piece of dust, and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and I for years, man, like I it just oh just man, crushed. but it was the first record of one of my first big gigs. <laughs> so it made I, like the sound effect noise that like the sound the effect, awkward yeah the awkward part of the room yeah. sound effect noise <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was <laughs> but to your point, I became a resident, and See, it was there you, you go. Know, but it yeah. was it was just like horrifying. <laughs> so I know, I understand uh, your pain on that. Um, well, I mean, you know, presently, you know. So I, I had a question for you because you mentioned something else. Did, have you done like been to defected Croatia? Did you tell? Yeah, me? yeah, yeah. Tell me about um, that. That's like a oh, dream, man. not it only was, a dream to play, but a yeah. dream just to go. Right. It was so cool. Like we went uh, this last summer. Um, and it was just at first it was just gonna be my boyfriend, my buddy Mark, yep. and maybe our buddy Michael, and we just told a couple of friends about it, and it snowballed into like twelve to fifteen of us going. Jesus, and it just was just the perfect festival. Like there were three stages during the day, one by the beach, 
one main stage and then kind of like um i think it's called like the olive grove we kept okay. calling it the olive garden but um <laughs> there was like no bad music anywhere um yeah. you could just there's like you know like the the og is like mike dunn would play something yeah. And then, um, you know, you have like huge, like Honey Dijon played another stage and just like all the, all like the, like just every corner of like great house music was there. Um, Plus the weather there is beautiful. Yeah, we did have, it did mess us up um, a couple times. Uh, There was a rainstorm one night. Okay. And then we had this boat party for cats and dogs that we were really excited about, but the waves were too dangerous to be on the boat. Okay. So that was a letdown, but um just the the whole atmosphere was like perfect you know if you think about like uh like just you know any underground club here or just a club where like it's more of like a community feel everyone's really fun friendly with each other and vibing and like really diverse like within the age and and race and gender um that's that's what that was just yeah. everyone having a good time and you know no one really causing any problems and it's like really just connecting with people over over great music like it really felt like it just like imbibe that spirit. Yeah. So it was it was fun. Is the if if you had it your way, I mean, do you have the potential connections to maybe even play a set out there? I mean, it's I I hope so. Yeah. I, well, I mean, not not yet, but there are things that are happening that yeah. might start leaning that way. So hopefully that would be really cool. Yeah. I will say I did. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of funny, but um, we stayed at the host hotel, and they have uh, they had like kind of like their like defected like. Like kind of like just like people that were not like you know big like lineup DJs, but right. people they're involved with that they were DJing at the hotel, and they had this banner that says "Defected Croatia," and um, one of my buddies just asked the owner of the hotel if we could play. Oh, cool! Yeah, and you guys of course had your USBs with you. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, um, initially, she said no. Um, she wasn't sure if that was going to be okay. Right. Um, and then at the festival, another, another buddy of ours just runs into Wes Saunders, CEO defected and he's talking about it. And Wes is just like, yeah, I'd be cool with it. You yeah. should do it. <laughs> so <laughs> the next day we played for a little bit at the defected That's so cool. hotel. So you got some, some actual pictures of you. Oh yeah. 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 yeah for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. That's the dream. Like, the dream for me would be to do some version of this and idea like if, all bets were like some version of this talking to artists, then also doing a set and then also just kicking it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, yeah, it totally. seems, but I'm going to go regardless. I plan to go uh, one of these. Oh, I highly recommend oh, it. Yeah. yeah it's, I've heard nothing but good things. It's really good. Yeah. Super good. Very cool. Yeah. Well, what, what, what are you working on? Like right now? What's, what's, you know, are there things you're working on or is it just you're, you're chugging away? It seems like I'm seeing your name all over the place. So. Um, I think I, let's see. Let's split it into like uh, trying to keep producing, yeah. um, build skills in that, and also just trying to get signed constantly with that. And then like the just kind of like the I call it like gig chasing. That's yeah. kind of like a constant hustle. You're just yeah. trying to engage promoters and talk to them, which is uh, it's you know I I took a break from that towards the end of last year because I was just getting really burnt it's out. It's exhausting, on it. man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You have to kind of put yourself out there and also you do get ignored and ghosted yep. and passed up. So And you have um, to go out a lot too, right? Right. Like that's the yeah. tough part if you're working a yeah, for sure. day gig, yeah. Yeah. So it's you know, it's I I have to kinda of like start pounding the pavement with that. So I'm gonna try to start engaging people again and just like getting the calendar filled. And then on the production side the production side um just i am trying to i would say like cut down the time it makes me to finish a track is it so i can try to get more right yeah i think my cadence is about like a month or so okay um and then there's a whole like getting it mastered and then pitching it and like getting rejected and then like trying to get signed and stuff like that so there's a huge process to it um and it's just like i want to start growing in that direction more like being more of a producer yeah that djs so yeah yeah that well that was i was gonna follow up with that so okay cool in an ideal world you would probably be producing more and then being booked based on your production but also right DJing. Yeah. yeah 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 like i i feel like um you know like i i have a lot of um, I hope this doesn't sound cocky, but like I, I feel like my my skills as a DJ are are, are pretty. 
um, pretty developed, yeah. uh, I guess you could say. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've gotten like enough feedback to to do that, but like I want to um, just be known as an artist, yeah, um, more so. So I'm trying to push in that direction more, um, and just be able to like play DJ sets where like I play some of my songs, but also they they work with the DJ set I'm playing. Yeah. So my hunch, yeah. my hunch, and I you know I think actually I talked to Rachel about this, Rachel Vick. It's, mm-hmm. I think there's just That's like awesome. <laughs> there's like a next level um there's like a next level buzz when you when the crowd's getting off but the crowd's getting off on your track like yeah. it just that seems like that would be a pretty cool oh, experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 really cool. Um and I I now can like I have tracks that like stand up next to like the other stuff I'm playing. Yeah. So that's that's really exciting. Yeah. Um it was, you know, at first uh, really, really scary to like play out your own tunes and oh, yeah, yeah, that was really nerve wracking. <laughs> I mean, it still kind of is. Like sometimes I won't do it, but sure. Um, Are there moments yeah. where you where you were you were sure you were gonna do it and then you pull it back at the last? The oh last, yeah. yeah, 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 definitely, <laughs> definitely been like, all right, I'm gonna do it, and then even like started like you know like beat matching and queuing it up, but like, nah. <laughs> wow, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're, I mean, I'm I'm getting over that like yeah. slowly. Just the more you do it, and the more comfortable you get in like what you're doing, yep. Um, it gets less less scary. So yeah, yeah, very cool. And, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. I was also, I think, I don't know if you you, you told me you do know Terry Jacinto, but the the other thing that was really surprising to me when I was talking to him about production was, you know, it's it's like uh, you're only as good as. Or you're you're not even as good as your last track almost. Like if you can put out a banger mm-hmm. and it gets a lot of attention, right? It doesn't mean that you're gonna instantly the, your next track's gonna right. get picked up. Like it's a lot yeah. of work, man. It's you yeah, you need to keep going at it. Yeah. Um and uh there's I, I've heard a couple pieces of advice recently, um, where like having a having a catalog helps already. So like, you know, like they might hear one really good song. Yeah. But it helps if you've got stuff like on your Spotify they can check out. Yep. Um, I think there's a story about how Solardo, um, they had one song really pick up, but they had like 12 in the bag already that were really good that they just hadn't like released or something. So it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. There's a whole like, I, I guess there's this, I don't know if you'd call it a strategy, but there's, there's a whole side to like that whole path and how you can grow on it. It's, and it's like one song is, I, I don't know. I mean, there's always like one sign thing that like really people get a lot, like really get, or it gains people a lot of attention, but, um, yeah. you know, you, you either have to keep going or have stuff ready for the next thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Unless it's what sandstorm was. That cool? <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause now they play yeah. it at the hockey games or whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the dream. I right. Think. I mean, dude's still tours. So <laughs> <I know he laughs> yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's like the edge 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 case oh, yeah. where they're playing it at yeah, like yeah. MLB and right. football games and hockey games. Yeah, and I mean, there's this other thing like so. Um, West End, he's really good about sharing his story too. Um, and he recently talked about something on his Instagram where like he has like all his tracks on SoundCloud. Yeah, but it took until like track number forty-seven or something for someone to get attention, or for some for someone to get his or for attract to get attention from people wow so you know it's just like i think people see like rapid success yeah. but there's always like a like a longer story behind it yeah. so yeah I, I mean that that is honestly that's like one of the one of the themes i think of doing this is just exposing that because i think there's a lot of i mean we were talking about people sort of off camera that seem like they're blowing up but yeah i think in general there's a lot of struggle and a lot of hard work and a lot of heartbreak that happens. Oh before, yeah. Yeah, totally. Before you play lost or before, yeah. you know what I mean? Or before right. that track goes, goes yeah. number 10 on beat port or whatever. Like there's a lot of work that, that goes into it. And I think people make this assumption that they just have it easy for what they make excuses, right? Right. They got it easy yeah. for whatever X reason. <laughs> and, and I don't think it's like that. I think a lot of yeah. people, especially in Seattle scene work really fucking hard to, you know, consistently yeah. put music out. I see the same people out. I see the same people kind of, right. you know. Yeah, I mean, all all of it takes energy. Yeah. And also, like, not just, like, physical, but, like, mental and emotional and energy. And, like, if you get, you have to deal with a lot of rejection. Or even just for me, like, I get a lot of anxiety 
yeah. approaching people or even just sending emails off. Yeah. <laughs> like I sent a demo out last night and I'm sitting there like <laughs> fingers trembling <laughs> on the send and receive. <laughs> right. And I'm like, does that sound right? You know? And yeah. You went, but so. you went into your sent fo- you went into the sent folder yeah, and you looked see? and saw if you sent it like an asshole or not, right? Like, oh yeah. yeah. I, I definitely like read it back instantly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. 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 Well, I guess that would lead me into another question. You know, I mean, you've given a lot of like sort of sage words of wisdom, but if, you know, for the up and comers, whether it's yeah. producers or DJs, um, and even like, you know what I'm seeing also, I'm seeing like this sort of renaissance of, of older folks that are coming back uh-huh. into the scene and, yeah. and just getting involved again. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of an example of that even myself. You yeah, know? totally. Um, do you have, you have some like, you know, Alfonso Tan words of advice for, for folks you know, as they're trying to make a mark. Oh yeah, totally. Um, well, before I say that, I, yeah. I know this gets, this question gets asked a lot and I've never heard anyone say protect your ears. So yes, <laughs> I, and I'm, I'm awful about it, yeah. but I have like, I'm just like, okay, like if I'm trying to be in this for a long time, um, that's, that's just a side one. So that's no, like I think it's a great point and but nobody has I, said that here either, <laughs> but it's true, man. I'm, I have tinnitus. And I, yeah. So yeah. I, in like, I, I I need to be better about myself. Yeah. Like my boyfriend's always on me about it. Yeah. And I just am not good about it. But that would be like a side piece of advice. Yep. I think as far as like DJing goes, um, starting off like uh, you, the entry level is like cheap now. Yeah. You know, don't buy like the, the Ferrari of gear yeah. when you don't need that to play, like just to learn how to mix and stuff like that and even see if you really like it. Yeah. Um, so I'd start with that and like, you know, on record boxes, like record boxes, the club standard. And then once you get into like the, the space where you're trying to get gigs, I think it's really important to like, just be a face at the ones like you're really interested in and show that you're there for not just yourself, but like just to be a community member. Um, and you know, not asking for something straight at the gate helps and just getting to know the people there. Yeah. Um, you know, approaching with humility is like probably the, the, the best way to, to get yourself in with a good impression. Um, so, you know, maybe after like getting to know some of the promoters, you'd be like, Hey, like if there's any opportunities coming up, I'd like to play. And that's, that's just one of those things where though, you know, if you have a good impression with them, they'll, they'll keep you in mind. Yeah. Um, and you know, as, as someone that does like some like book booking and stuff like that and promoting, um, it's, it might not be like immediately, but most of the time they're not going to forget you. They really don't, right? you know, that you're kept in mind. Um, and then I guess, yeah, starting off, that would probably be like the way to, to do it. And you do really have to be kind of out there and like yep. be a, be a face in the community. Yeah. So. It doesn't really, I think some people forget that it, it, you can put a great like mix together. Right. Like, you know, but if you're not out there sort of showing up, supporting other events, yeah. supporting other crews, you know, just, just yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's lots like it's different pieces, right? You yeah. know, like I said, as someone that, as someone that like does book DJs and does promotion and stuff like that, um, it's, I, I look for those things more than like if their mix is like the best mix I've ever heard, but they're, they're not supportive of the community yeah. or they're not like, or they're not easy to work with. They're unprofessional. Yep. Um, this is, you're not going to get a gig. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Like don't stand in the booth when Gene Lee is trying to make something. <laughs> I I'm know. What a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> um, last question for you. And right. I want to, I want to cut you loose on the, sure. uh, on the decks, but yeah. Um, well, let's call them the Ferrari of decks. You know <laughs> they I mean? are though, but you know, <laughs> just I was not, but you hone your skills. See, that's so right, that's yeah, right, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it w- outside of music i know we've only talked about music yeah. but like do you have any other hobbies any other things that you do yeah so um i uh and neither of these are huge ones but i still enjoy them a lot i snowboard ah. um i used to be uh every sunday lap in the terrain park nice guy and um i also uh i'll say I used to auto race i don't anymore but um i, I have a honda s2000 that i throw around the track God, those are so cool beforehand and like now i i just kind of like driving around for fun and like right. just to like <laughs> yeah just like open throttle every now and then um it doesn't see the racetrack anymore but still get a lot of fun from driving it like you know sporty aggressive roads you were doing like, like autocross with it yeah so yeah. autocross and also there's a racetrack out in shelton yep 
Um, so I go out there and throw it around there. So I'm a little bit of a car guy. Oh, cool! Um, but but nice. not not that. Stupid. Yeah, I I have I love cars, man. So yeah, they're, I mean they're they're all, like they're even though I don't spend a lot of time with the car anymore or like yeah. working on it, um, I still like to like keep up on like you know sport compact sport cars and stuff like that. Current but technology. That that particular car special so, though. That's oh a, yeah, that's a yeah, cool yeah, car. yeah. It's yeah. a timeless. Yeah. 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 So cool. Yeah. Um, well, anything, anything you want to say, like, I know we covered a lot, but is there yeah. any, any events coming up, anything you want to shout out? Um, and if you don't have it or if you feel on the spot, that's fine. And sure. Whatever. Like, is there anything we missed that that's coming up for you? Um, so, uh, I guess my next gig is, uh, at the cuff next Saturday, the 10th. Nice. Um, and then, there's a couple of things I can't announce it, but they'll hopefully be stuff we can talk about soon. One thing I did get permission to announce recently is uh, my next track is scheduled, or next for this year. Um, it's in June, and it's this this label called Adesso. Okay. Um, it's owned by Junior Jack and Pat BDS. Wow. So right. out in Europe. Nice. And so I'm pretty stoked about that because it was a track I felt really good about. That was actually, just a solo. A solo. You made it all you, or was it a collab? It was it was a solo track. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I actually kind of finished it towards the end of Defected Croatia and Killer. It's exciting because um, yeah, that label you see some like some of the European names I really look up to release on it and stuff like that. So that's that's super exciting. Hell yeah. Um, hopefully more of that stuff to come. <laughs> Very cool. But keep an eye out. It's not till June. Nice. Yeah. But. Well yeah. Well good deal, man. It sounds like you're doing it. You're on yeah. you're on a good path. I'm excited to see where where the the evolution happens for you even you know especially yeah. the production stuff i think it's gonna be fun to watch yeah hopefully the momentum keeps up and yeah. you know like I, and also uh the shout out i guess would be to you guys just oh. i really appreciate this and like i enjoy like just seeing what you guys are doing and <laughs> it's just it's just been awesome so no, i mean it's but, yeah. but honestly it's it's people like you that stand out to me that just like it, there, there's just there's there's got to be something there like a little click and and like i said when i first met you i was like oh i click with him he's cool i never <laughs> cool. i never had met him in person and then my wife called it out too so it's just i love and i and i love hearing people's stories and i think other people yeah. like that too it's it's inspiring. yeah i mean i've i've definitely really enjoyed hearing yeah. other people's stuff and also just hearing also what they bring here too yeah. so yeah. yeah it's a it's a fun it's a fun set to play because you don't have to worry about anything you play whatever right. you, want. you could yeah. even play one of your tracks and nobody's gonna leave the dance floor <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> exactly anyway man yeah. thank you for coming through yeah thank you all right appreciate it all right we'll talk to you soon all right see ya. See ya.
Is it he to you? Is it he to you? Is it he to you?
Your presence is so godly.